Hey everybody, so now I am planting up the annual bed that's right along our patio here and I just thought I'd walk you through um, the plants that I'm putting in there. This is an area that I fill mostly with annuals. Um, there is a climbing rose that goes in here, um, that grows here, it's called Autumn Sunset, and then there's a clematis that grows up this trellis right here. But beyond that, everything else is annuals and I love to go nuts with the color here. So I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna be putting in there. So you can see that I've got I've started sort of laying things out here. So um, I'm, I'm okay with this being a little random, but I do like there to be at least a pattern to it. I don't have like a color scheme, but I like there to be a pattern to it. So you can kind of see that developing here. Um, so I thought I'd just walk you through what is gonna go in here. Okay, so first up is Diamond Mountain Euphorbia. This gets like 24 to 36 inches tall. It should be like a big, airy ball. I've got three of those throughout the area kind of evenly spaced. The next really big statement plant I have is Surefire uh, Begonia. This is the rose colored one and I like this begonia because it grows in full hot sun or in shade and um, there is kind of a sort of protected spot down there but it gets these really beautiful dark leaves and really pretty rosy um, rosy pink flowers that it's kind of a pink that works well with everything. Um, I grow this one here every single year, so it's just a must-have for me. I plant two of those together because I want a really big mass of it um, rather than just little dots of it. I want a big mass of that pink. Um, next up in the front is, this is one of my favorite plants. This is uh, Blue Lobelia. This is Laguna Sky Blue. Um, I love that plant. Um, it's just so pretty. It does really well for me here. Uh, because we've got, I do have drip line running here, so it gets nice and watered, and it's just a, the most electric blue, so I love that. Um, on either side of that, this is a sedum. Now, I know these are in Proven Winners pots, but um, I reuse all my pots. So this is sedum that I overwintered and then divided, so I grew all these from a plant that I had last year. Um, so that is a really good way to be able to plant a lot of those. Um, next up, is um, I've got several of these dotted throughout. This is just um, this is just Nicotiana alata. Nic excuse me, Nicotiana. Apparently, I've been saying that wrong. A lot of lime green. Gets a beautiful lime green flower on it. Oh, behind here, by the way, are all uh, dinner plate dahlias along here. That's what the stakes are for too. So those get nice and tall. So I don't have to worry about planting taller plants in here because those dinner plate dahlias will definitely get taller than that. Then I also have, um, so I grew a lot of that uh, Nicotiana, so I've got that. Then I have this lovely little plant. This is a Signet Marigold. This one is Tangerine Gem, so it gets a small orange flower. has this beautiful foliage. It smells like oranges, you guys. I swear it does. Um, and it's just lovely. It's got nice foliage, but just gets covered in orange flowers all year long. Kind of a very clear orange, but they're smaller flowers, so they don't get too sort of gauche. Um, what other plants do I have? I mean, that's sort of a joke because you guys, this is my stash of plants, most of which I grew myself. Oh, uh, Gomfrina. This is Gomfrina, which looks fairly pathetic in its little pots here, but I've always found that once I stick them in the ground, they get going. This is, I think, ping pong mix. So the only problem with these is that I don't know what color they're gonna bloom. They could be purple, bright pink, or like light pink or white, I think. But I will stick some of those in there because those get that little ball. So over here I have a uh, tray of ageratum. There's two different kinds in here. Um, there is blue mink and um, dondo blue. Um, so I grew those from seed and I've got places for those around the garden, but I think I will stick some of those in here as well. I've already mixed in a lot of organic fertilizer in here, uh, fertilizer specifically like a bloom fertilizer. Um, so that's all there is to do here. And this is highly amended soil anyways, plants tend to do well here. So um, I just have to figure out these last couple of plants and then get planting. Okay, so as you might have noticed, like three quarters of the way through that, it started raining. So I ran the camera inside and then I kept planting and that explains a little bit of why I look like this at the end of the video. But let's just take a look what it looks like. It's a little bit of a mess because 
it got a little dirty with the rain and then I tried to hose it off and then I got the plants all dirty and I made it worse, but let's take a look at it anyways. Okay, so there's everything all planted. Let's be honest, it's not exactly stunning yet. Um, that's how most plantings go. Oh, there's a little toad in here. I've had so many toads this year. Do you see him right here beyond the drip? Oh, he's about to get... There he goes. Anyways. Um, anyways, everything's a little bit flattened and a little bit messy, but I think this is going to perk up quickly and I think this will start looking like something quickly. So um, it's mostly sort of ended up being not counting the dahlias behind it, it ended up mostly being sort of blues and chartreuse, white with the pop of pink, and then there's the orange in there. So, um, you know, the nice thing about a border like this is that you can just, if something's not working, you just pop something else in. So, um, but I think it'll look pretty good soon and it's nice to have that project done. So this is the timer that I'm using. Uh, Gilmore actually sent me this one to test out I had one last year that was a little lower profile and it didn't even make it through the summer before it crapped out on me. Um, I'm really liking this one so far because if you can see on that dial, it's super clear. I didn't, I will admit, I did not read the instructions. And to me, a timer, you shouldn't need to read the instructions. So I'm so far, I'm liking this. Anyways, this one turns on my water once a day, but I can adjust that as the summer goes along it might be too much it might not be enough i just got to kind of play it by ear on that so anyways that's the timer that i'm using for the watering over here in this bed so as usual you know we'll be checking in with this seeing how all this stuff grows i guarantee you it'll look better than it looks today in a couple of weeks so um hope you have a great day enjoy your garden